think I have enough of your pre show business biography. You know, actually, our readers are more interested in the little intimate details of married life. Oh? So, do you mind if I ask you a few personal questions? Oh, I, I guess not. Fine. What do you sleep in? A bed. <laughs> I mean, do you sleep in pajamas, pajama tops, pajama bottoms, or, or do you just sleep completely in the... <clears throat> <laughs> well, in, in the wintertime, I sleep in pajamas, but in the summertime... Mommy! <clears throat> <laughs> 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 what? What? Who's what's the matter? What's wrong? What? Rusty! He's gonna pop me! Rusty's gonna pop you? What for? You bit him? Well, would you want to do a thing like... What's the matter? What's wrong? Ross, wait a minute. Hey, hey, come back here. Oh, Rusty. Now, Rusty, you're not really going to hit your sister, are you? I guess not. She locked the door. <laughs> now, Rusty, you know you're not like that. Well, she bit me. What'd she bite you for? How do I know? Maybe you don't feed her enough meat. <laughs> now, look, wise guy. I don't want you treating your sister like that. Do you want to... Are you going to pop me, Rusty? You bet I am! Come down here. One more scream out of you and you're going to get it. Now, you. I do not want you chasing your sister around the house like that. Is that understood? Yes, sir, but she bit me. Linda, you know you're not supposed to bite your brother, don't you? Yes, Mommy. And you know why. It doesn't taste good. <laughs> no, because it's not a very nice thing to do. Now, quiet down, both of you. Run out in the kitchen now and get yourself something to eat. Go on. Okay, but if she bites me again, she's gonna wind up with a mouthful of loose teeth. Here, 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 here. <laughs> oh. Kids, they certainly can be a problem sometimes, can't they? Yes. <laughs> so I've been told. Of course, I never have any problems with my son. Oh? Oh, you have a son? Oh, yes, I do. Quite a son, yes. He's about Rusty's age. Uh -huh. His name is Charles. He's away in boarding school. He's been there the past few years. Oh, don't you miss him away from home all the time? Oh, yes, I do. But it's a sacrifice we had to make. You see, my husband is an engineer, and he travels a good deal. As a matter of fact, he's in South America right now. Of course, my job really keeps me popping, so we felt that perhaps our boy ought to have a more stable environment. It's a, a military academy. Oh, the discipline has just been marvelous for him. He, he's, he's a sheer delight. He's a perfect little gentleman. Well, Excuse me. Now, Mr. Williams, uh, what did you tell me? Hello? What was your first job oh, when you got to New York? Yes, I opened she is. at Lamar Meek at the nightclub on 57th Street. And, uh, Mrs. Crane, uh, this uh, phone is for you. Oh, excuse me. It's probably my editors. I gave them this phone number. No. Excuse me. Thank you. Yes, Carl. Really? Cary Grant. Yes, I can be packed in half an hour. Uh, have my secretary get me a, a, a plane reservation on the jet at 5 o'clock. Thank you, Carl. Isn't that exciting? Mm -hmm. Cary Grant is going to let me do an article on him. Well, that's a... oh, it's well as I was saying, I opened in the Martinique, and I was I'm a afraid, Mr. Williams, we'll have to let this interview there. with you go. <laughs> <laughs> Until I get back, I'm awfully sorry. I... Oh, dear. Is something wrong? Well, you know, tomorrow is my son's birthday, and I, I thought it would be nice if we could spend it together, so I arranged with the school to have him spend the weekend with me. Oh, and now you'll be away. Why, yes. uh, uh, that's going to be very disappointing to him, isn't it? Yes, I know it is. I could probably get back tomorrow afternoon, but I, I don't know where, uh, where I would put Charles tonight. Well, I hate to do it, but I guess I'll just have to ask him to stay in the school. This Cary Grant interview is pretty important. Hmm. Mommy, Mommy! What's the matter? Rusty made me hurt my neck. Oh, there. Rusty is such a rough neck. Oh. oh, that's just a little scratch, darling. Run upstairs and put yeah. a bandage on it. Go on. Can I put a bandage on this knee? Well, there's no scratch on that knee. But I want my knees to match. <laughs> All right, run in my room on my dresser. You'll find some bandages. Ross! Okay. Ross! Yeah, Dad? What is it, son? Every time you play with that baby, she gets hurt. What's the matter with you? I couldn't help it. I fell off the chair. You fell off the chair and she got hurt? Yeah, she was standing on my shoulders. <laughs> Why was she standing on your shoulders? She had to. 
What? Somebody put that chocolate cake up on the top shelf or I couldn't reach it. <laughs> Mrs. Williams, may I use your telephone? Oh, yes, go right ahead. Thank you. Why do you do crazy things like that, Russ? What's the matter? Oh, we get it from that boy Philip he's been running around with. His mother says he gets it from me. <laughs> no matter who gets it from who, now you've got to start settling down. You're growing up, you know. Yes, why can't you play with some boys that, that you can learn something from? You pick up the bad habits of every boy that you associate with. Mrs. Crane, just a minute. I, I, I just had a thought. Why don't you let your boy come here and spend the night with us? Oh, no, I, I couldn't impose. Oh, it wouldn't be an imposition. As a matter of fact, you'd be doing us a favor. Maybe some of his nice manners would rub off on our ruffian here. You know, Kathy, that's an excellent idea. Oh, Miss Williams, I couldn't. You, you, you wouldn't have to ask him to cancel his that's trip. That's right. Yes, it'd be all right, really. Well, you know, I, I know he wouldn't be any trouble. Of course he wouldn't. No. Well, this is very kind not of you. Not at all, not at all. I'll have my secretary pick him up at the depot and drop him off here. Good. Oh, fine. Well, and I'll try and get back tomorrow. All right. Oh, thank you wonderful. so much. Don't worry about him and have a nice trip. Thank yes, you. we'll take good care of him. Bye. Goodbye, Miss Crane. Was that the doorbell? No, Daddy. Gee whiz, you'd think you're expecting Mickey Mantle. Never mind. Supposed to be here at three. It's almost a quarter after. I wonder what's keeping him. Maybe he stopped off at a crap game. <laughs> Just cracks like that. Cracks like that that make me believe more and more that you should go to a military school and learn a little discipline. Oh, gee whiz, Daddy. He can't be as perfect as everybody's making him sound. I don't care what he's like. I'm going to hate him. <laughs> Why are you going to hate him? Because I love Rusty. <laughs> Thanks, kid. You can bite me anytime you want. <laughs> well, come in. Thank you, sir. You're Charles Crane? Yes, sir. Fine, I'm, uh, I'm Mr. Williams. It's an honor to meet you, sir. Yes, how are you? <laughs> My wife, Mrs. Williams, Kathy. It's an honor to meet you, Miss Williams. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> it's a very charming apartment you have here. Oh, thank you. Holy smoke, I'm practically drafted. <laughs> this is our son, Rusty. Hello, Rusty. I'm afraid I'm going to have to pose you for a day or so, but I'll try and keep out of your way. You know, that sounds like the best idea yet. <laughs> Never mind, wise guy. This is our daughter, Linda. Hello, Linda. You're beautiful. I love you. <laughs> well, thank you, Linda. Traitor! All right. All right. Uh, let me, let me take your coat, son. Thank you. Hey, those stripes are really impressive here. What, what do they all mean? Oh, it's nothing, sir. Oh, come on, tell us, Charles. Well, the top one here is Cadet Corps Leader, Rifle Drill, Marksmanship, and Attendance. And the rest are for getting the highest grades in my class for four consecutive terms. Oi! <laughs> well, let me uh, take your bag upstairs. Well, darling, I'll take his coat. All right, dear, thank you. Hang it in the closet. Like this way, say. It's a kind of a heavy bag. What have you got in here? Oh, just some books. Books? Well, things I've grown fond of. There's Gibbon's uh, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, and a collection of Shakespeare's plays, and there's Sandberg's Life of Lincoln. <laughs> you and your cockamamie comic books. <laughs> Come on. The bathroom is right through that door, and plenty of closet space right here. Yeah, you can hang your clothes and your halo in there. <laughs> you know, it's your trouble, you're just jealous because he reads something else besides comic books. Why don't you try reading Sandberg's Life of Lincoln? Do you know, sir, you remind me of him. Sandberg? No, Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, come on, son. What's true, sir? No, they could never get my nose on a penny. <laughs> There's a passage in the book where the author speaks of the craggy grandeur of Lincoln's face. And now, for the first time, I realize what he means. Craggy grandeur? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Well, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, see you at dinner then, huh? <laughs> there's, there's hardly any resemblance at all. <laughs> I bet we're gonna be great friends, Rusty. What odds are you looking for? <laughs> hey, why don't we play some of the games I learned in school? Like what? 
Well, can you stand on one foot and hold the other in your hand like this? Oh, anybody can do that! teach you who's head of this mob. Hey, have you flipped? Go on, rat on me. Go run into your papa. I know how to take care of squealers. Oh, quit that kind of talk. I don't squeal. I'm no stool pigeon. Besides, your dad wouldn't believe anything bad you said about me. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> All right. Now we understand this, each other. Maybe we can have some laughs together. Here, I've got some stuff to show you. This is the life of Lincoln? Well, this is some of my stuff. Oh, and this is a little Jim Dandy smoke bomb. <laughs> I had two of them, but I used one of them on the train this morning. You should have seen those old ladies yelling and screaming. <laughs> and this is a dribble glass. When you drink out of it, it dribbles down your face. Oh, and here's some sneezing powder. I use a lot of this stuff on my history teacher. He thinks he's got hay fever. <laughs> I'm making his life miserable. What have you got against your history teacher? He's a grown-up. <laughs> grown-up? What's wrong with that? I hate them. I hate them all. They think they run the world. Well, how'd you win all those stripes if you feel that way? What stripes? Oh, you mean this uniform? Oh, this belongs to my roommate. They put me in with the class president because they figured he'd be good influence on me. <laughs> I swipe his uniform whenever I come home to impress my mom. How do you get away with it? Doesn't your mother ever come up to school to visit you? Won't the teachers ever talk to her? Ah, oh, she's got no time for that. She's the biggest of the big shots, running all over the country with her interviews. The commandant wrote her a couple letters, but I swiped them out of the mail sack before they even got to the post office. <laughs> oh, hey, I don't want to talk about it. Hey, you know, you're not such a bad kid. Want some peanut brittle? Yeah, thanks! Wife with a sense of humor. <laughs> Got everything all set up for you, honey.
come down here. What's going on? That's what I'd like to know, what's going on? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Somebody booby-trapped the kitchen. <laughs> out of childish, silly, practical jokes. Oh. Now, what gives? What? Oh, come on, what is it? I'm, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I can't tell you anything about it. I don't get it. Why are you trying to protect him? Huh? Look, I, I'm not asking you to be a squealer. I know how your kids feel about that. You don't have to squeal. I already know it was Charles. What I want to know is why. What's going on? You don't think I did it? I know you didn't do it. I know you better than any living person. I know you better than I know yourself. You'd never do a thing like that to your dad. You couldn't do that any more than sprout wings and fly. Not my boy. My boy couldn't do a thing like that. Now you're not smart enough to wire up an electric toaster. <laughs> I guess I'm lucky I'm a stupid boy. <laughs> okay, now, tell me, what's it all about? What's good morning, Mr. Williams. Oh, oh, good morning, good morning. It's a nice morning, isn't it? Uh, why don't you run up and get dressed, huh? Okay, Dad. I'd like to talk to you, General. Sit down. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Look, uh, yesterday you and I had a pretty long talk about Abraham Lincoln. Yes, sir. The resemblance is quite extraordinary. All right, all right, all right. Let's cut that jazz, huh? Now, look, if you're such a student of Lincoln, I'm sure you remember that he said, you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Oh, well, yes, sir. Well, I gotta admit that you had me fooled part of the time. I don't know what you mean, sir. Well, I'll tell you what I mean. Those gags in the kitchen. Don't you know that it's wrong to waste food and to destroy people's property? Well, I don't think it's fair of you, sir. To accuse me of something your son probably did. There's something very inconsistent here, boy. The way you're behaving right now. And that uniform, eh? The two don't just go together. If you have any doubts about my character, sir, I'll be glad to phone the head of my school and you can ask them any questions you'd like. You don't have to call the head of your school. Thank you, sir. Myrtle, get me Bennington Boys Academy in Riverdale. Just because you're older than I am, you think you know everything. What's wrong with you, boy? What's it to you? Come on, what is it? What's eating you? Grown-ups, I hate them. I hate them all. I hate him. You're just a kid. What do you know about hate? How can you possibly hate? Oh, I feel sorry for you. You don't have to be sorry for me. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. Nobody cares about me. I don't care about anybody. What are you talking about? Your mother and father care about you. Oh, yeah, they care about me a lot. That's why they shoved me into some old school so I'd be out of their way. Yeah, they care about me a lot. Today's my birthday. Where are they? Your mother's gonna be here this afternoon. She said she'd try to make it. Maybe. Nothing more important comes up. I'm sure your birthday's very important to your mother. Yeah. Christmas is supposed to be important too, isn't it? Of course it is. Well, where were they last Christmas? And the Christmas before that? My dad out building a bridge someplace. My mom out chasing celebrities. I opened my presents with a janitor. Oh. I'm sorry. And I'm jumping on you for blowing up a toaster. I'm surprised you haven't tried to blow up the world. Take it easy, General. Things will work out. Hey, how about you going and having some breakfast and then come over with me to my rehearsal at the club? Watch and see how a show is put together. Might be interesting. Think you'd like that? Do you mean it, sir? Of course I mean it. No lectures? No lectures. Oh, gosh, yeah. All right. You know, you're not such a bad guy for a grown-up. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Oh, 
Mr. Williams? Hey, don't sit in that chair! <laughs> Mr. Williams, this is perfectly ridiculous. Charles is very happy in his school. How would you know? You've been around long enough to find out? You traipsing all over the world? All of my trips are very important ones. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving on a plane for Miami tonight. Now, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to see Charles now, please. I try to spend as much time with him as I possibly can. You mean like last Christmas? Last Christmas? Well, that couldn't be helped. I, I had a very important job. My editors had an assignment... Important assign job? How can you say that? Important job. The most important job you've got is bringing up that boy. He's your job. You can't slough him on anybody else, a school or anybody else. He's your responsibility. Sure, sure, you provide him with fine things, a good education, fancy clothes, a nice presence, but you're not giving him the things he really needs. You. You he needs, and your love. I... Look, lady, if you really care about that kid, I mean really care, you better do something about it and quit. And for your sake, I hope it's not too late. Mr. Williams! Oh. Hello, Mother. Hello, Charles. Sit down. Charles, uh, Mr. Williams tells me that you're unhappy in your school. Is that true? Answer me, Charles. Do we have to talk about it now? Yes, I'm afraid we do. I want to know. Mr. Williams tells me that you're unhappy in your school. Is that true? Answer me. What difference does it make to you? You, you don't care if I'm happy or not. You haven't got time for me. So, so why don't you just wish me happy birthday and send me back to school? I'll get my things. Charles, wait. I'm so sorry. Would you give me another chance? Mom, Paul. Mom. <laughs> Mr. Williams. Would you call my secretary and ask her to cancel my plane reservations, please? I'd call myself, but as you see, I have my hands full. Sure. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's wrong? What is it? Who? Who's after? Why? 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 What is it? Stop it now! Just a second. What's going on here? She bit me again. What? <laughs> Oh! <laughs>